Wonderful. Good morning, everybody. This is Mara Fine from the Jewish Butters Network in New York. Again, I'm going to request please mute yourselves if there's going to be noise on your end. Um, as you know, the Jewish Funders Network is a collaboration of philanthropists from all over the world committed to effecting positive change together. Um, our mission is that by coming together we can um, create the change that we would like to see in the world, and it is with that in mind that we create a programming such as this one. All of our programs are um, correlated to a JFN value. Um, and, and in this case, absolutely, ELU v. ELU, inclusion and partnership, RAVUT, are definitely the guidelines for what we're going to speak about today. Uh, we have several uh, fantastic individuals uh, speaking today about Turkish Jewry and also um, a school in Turkey. We're going to first hear from uh, Metin Bonfil, a board member of the Ulus Jewish School Foundation who serves as the chief, on the chief, chief Rabbinate Advisory Board and um, is also the founder of Total Finance, a finance firm focusing on cross-border mergers and acquisitions. Um, um, Metin will be sort of leading this call along with uh, some friends and colleagues. But, um, I've had uh, the pleasure of working with uh, Lina Fileba, who um, has served the Jewish community as a volunteer and leader for many, many years, and now she is the Executive Vice President of the Chief Rabbinate Advisory Board, a top Jewish professional post, um, or at least she was until 2011, um, and she continues to work with the school. Uh, we also will be hearing from Rifat Hassan and uh, Ron Kas Roni Kasfari. Um, all of these folks are active in the Jewish community in Turkey, and specifically, um, with uh, a Jewish school in Turkey that we'll, we'll be learning a little bit about. So uh, without further ado, I want to hand that off to um, Metin, and uh, we can start, start our call and our learning. Thank you, Merav. I hope everybody can hear us well. Uh, first, we'd like to thank uh, Jewish Founders Network for giving us this opportunity, in particular to Andres Pokoini, who is very resourceful and energetic. He came to visit us here in Istanbul. He's bringing Jews across the globe together. And Merav, to you, you helped us uh, prepare for this opportunity to address you. So now uh, it's 9 o'clock in Turkey, 9.07, and we are sitting in a meeting room in the school, which is located in one of the preferred residential areas in Istanbul since 20 years. Uh, our school is starting 100 years ago, uh, and it spent uh, 80 years in the older of Istanbul. But now we are uh, quite close to a very, very old American high school in, in 1905. So uh, we are talking to you from uh, uh, the new campus, let's say, of the Jewish school in Istanbul. So allow me to introduce our team here. Uh, we have with us uh, our uh, beloved uh, supporter, Rufat Hassan, who is 75 years young. He is really one of the main pillars of our school. He has headed uh, the board of trustees of the school who have supported. Uh, with that kind of name, still I am Jewish. <laughs> 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 and uh, whose, whose presence is, has been very, very important for uh, the school as a whole. Yeah. Uh, Rifat has uh, not only as a financial, but also uh, he has a business in real estate development uh, for many years in uh, import-export business and has been uh, one of the prominent business persons in Istanbul. We also have... Uh, Lina Filiba, as Merav said, Lina has had a substantial uh, number of years as executive vice president in our uh, community, and uh, she's a computer scientist, and also uh, she's now teaching project management courses as a PMP specialist. We have also uh, Etel Gidon, who is the school's vice president 
in charge of education and uh, she chairs our education committee. Uh, as a profession, Etel is an assistant professor at Istanbul Technical University and teaches undergraduate level mathematics. And finally, we have Rene Kaspi. Rene has uh, many years of experience uh, in education and she is our academic coordinator uh, for 12 years. And also a physics teacher. So that is our team. <coughs> and uh, allow me to <coughs> introduce to you what we would like to uh, tell you about today. In really about 15, 16 slides, we plan to talk briefly about our community in a snapshot, some of the challenges that we face as a community, our school. Also, we will touch a little bit on what's going on in Turkey now and how we are affected as Jews in particular. But as a side note, as a small disclaimer, allow me also to point out that we are neither analysts, political analysts, nor do we intend to pass any opinions or on political issues. We would very much like to focus on our community and our school uh, in particular. So I would like to pass on to Lina and uh, to briefly give you uh, a two-minute description of who the Jewish community in Turkey are, how we came here, and uh, some more information about it. Lina. Thank you, Metin. Duly noted. I will keep my uh, uh, information exchange short and remain within two minutes. It's very difficult to uh, talk about a community who has been here for more than 500 years in such a short time, but some of you, we believe, know the Turkish Jewish community very well, some maybe not, but uh, the community is basically a Sephardi community who has been here since 1492. And at the turn of the 20th century, we used to be 100,000 strong. That was during the last decades of the Ottoman Empire. But today, we're about 17,000. And why? Because of the two significant migrations during the First World War and during and after the Second World War. And the second migration specifically coincides with the foundation of the State of Israel. At that time, 35,000 Turkish Jews left the country for Israel. Uh, we came here during the Ottoman Empire, and the chief rabbi has since then been accepted, recognized as the legal leader of the Turkish Jews. On the other hand, we also have a secular leadership, a lay leadership, which also is uh, comprised of executive boards, representatives, and advisors, and this organization is organized under the umbrella of the chief rabbinate being the legal structure. Our community, as a community, we have a tradition of self-sufficiency with a very high degree of volunteerism and a very strong sense of belonging. And also, as a rule, we've always had good relations with the government, with the government, whoever is in power, thus we are continuing in the same tradition by continuing to cultivate good relations with the present government. Yes, I would also like to continue with what our community has, what do we do. As any other diaspora community, of course we have our schools, our synagogues, our old uh, elderly uh, homes and hospitals and social clubs, social assistance clubs. For us, for the future of the Jewish community, believing that our school is very important, we're going to explain to you in a few moments what we mean by what we do for education here. On the other hand, we have a hospital which is about 118 years young dating from the Ottoman Empire, catering 
both to the gener uh, general population and to the community. Our elderly age home is catering to about only 110 people, which is really very insufficient uh, for today's uh, old age uh, population. Taking care to uh, cover the social needs of our young and uh, teenagers, we have two youth clubs on each side of the Bosphorus and social assistance associations. And last but not least, we have to mention the fact that we have a weekly newspaper, which we call Shalom, which has been well and alive since 1947. It's in Turkish predominantly with one page in Ladino or Judeo-Spanish. As we say, you can find it online, and we also have printed copies, which are well known locally. The Shalom newspaper is the window to the community for the local population in Turkey. And just like any other Western uh, civilization country and Western uh, population, we are an aging, aging community with nearly 50% of the population above the age of 50. So some of the demographic changes affecting uh, our community uh, also get complemented by changes in the uh, way of doing business. As Lena said, uh, we pride ourselves to be a self-sufficient community for many years, owing to relatively good business positions uh, that were enjoyed by Jewish businessmen maybe a couple of uh, generations ago. <clears throat> However, with globalization, the traditional business models for uh, small, uh, medium-sized uh, businesses that are run by uh, Jewish businessmen uh, are no longer uh, compatible with today's needs. Uh, this creates a little bit of a challenge for young Jews who previously uh, enjoyed, let's say, positive discrimination. When you had a Jewish uh, entrepreneur, he liked to employ uh, young Jewish people to give them a chance. But today that's a little bit harder, and education is, has emerged since uh, our generation, really, I'm 56, as the key to future success uh, of young Jews. Unfortunately, uh, education is becoming more expensive in Turkey. And this is primarily because public education in Turkey has not met up with the challenges of today. So private schools are taking a larger share, and there is competition to enter into the top private schools in Turkey. Actually, we are also, as the Jewish state school, in that race to become one of the top choices for uh, Jewish families that they can trust not only uh, to get uh, cultural exposure, religious exposure, but also to excel in academic uh, performance. I must say recently that the negative political and economic outlook in Turkey is curbing locally growth and investment opportunities, but we have had crises in the past, but this is a negative effect on young people. They like to sort of look beyond Turkey at opportunities, what, what they can find. So I'd like to pass on to Lina. Uh, a little bit to talk about, actually, sorry, Etel, uh, to talk about the brief history of our school. Etel. Hi. The school is our fountain of hope, and uh, let me tell you that I've been doing uh, this chairing the education committee for more than 20 years, and I'm also a uh, to uh, my children, my son and my daughter graduated this school. Uh, it was established, the
the Jewish Day School was established 101 years ago, so it's a centennial school. First, uh, it was uh, named as Midrash Yavne. Then it has become Lycée Juif Beneberit with the Alias Israelis, <coughs> uh, collaborating with the Alias Israeli schools. And uh, 20 years ago, it has moved to its new campus and has been named as uh, Ulus Day School, Jewish Day School. Uh, it's the only fully functional K-12 Jewish day school in the Muslim world, catering to more than 40% of communities' relevant age group. So it's an uh, institution uh, that has uh, children or students from two years' age through 18 years. Uh, <clears throat> 610 preschool and uh, K-12 level students with 100 academic and 28 administrative personnel. The school is compliant with the Ministry of Education supervision and regulation. All schools in Turkey, private or state, are under the Ministry of Education control and as we are a minority school, we are also under the Ministry of Education control. <clears throat> we have the freedom of teaching Hebrew and Judaic religion. Uh, community family profile is generally traditional, but people generally lack the Jewish knowledge needed to create a strong sense of understanding of one's identity. Thus, the school is indispensable for ensuring a Jewish future in Turkey. <clears throat> Our academic standing commensurate with the most preferred private schools in Istanbul. And uh, <clears throat> we have students with at least one Jewish parent that are admitted. So having a one uh, Jewish parent is enough to be admitted to the school. About one third of the students receive financial assistance from the community. Believing that all children deserve to have a chance to study at our school, we have more than 36% scholarship students. And we have a small ratio out of this number that are merit scholarship students. Financial support provided by the community is around 2.2 US, uh, million US dollars yearly, straining the limits of donation capacity. School budget is about 5.5 million US dollars, and 40% is covered by fundraising for education. Contributions from the trustees, community donors, as well as community leadership add up to 40% of the yearly budget. Academic excellence, we have an academic excellence with a warm and familiar atmosphere to learn and experience Judaism, and 100% of our students continue into higher education uh, in the States, in Israel, and in Turkey. <coughs> Ours is a highly competitive Jewish school with a boutique approach to our students, responding sorry, to their- Lina. Lina, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Is, it's very, very loud by you. Is there any way to- Mitigate that. Okay. Responding to their personal needs, assisting them in their development into healthy, active, and knowledgeable young adults. Okay. Um, we are okay. So as you know, Istanbul is a very big city, and we have big city challenges 
we have a me we are living in a me megapole of 17 million inhabitants. Istanbul's traffic and the high cost of living represent major limitations in attracting more preschool pre children to the school. Preschool is key figure to first grade, and uh, because of the logistics, community has supported two new off-campus preschool facilities to serve Jewish families in relatively distant locations on either side of the Bosphorus. Living in a such vast city is a major constraint to Jewish families. There are limited numbers of Jewish spaces and competing modern environment for the young. And even if we want our children and teenagers to immerse themselves in Jewish environments among Jewish friends, it's hardly possible under these circumstances. Therefore, <coughs> the school is <coughs> invaluable in our need of raising the next generation as Jews and the key to integrate the children into Jewish life and counter assimilation. So we have we aim to preserve our heritage and teach our core values to the next generation, providing a solution against assimilation. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Etel. I'll take over from here and we'd like to talk a little bit about our environment. Uh, there is a lot of interest in Turkey, uh, especially after July 15, when uh, we experienced something extraordinary uh, like an attempted military coup. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about uh, that incident uh, and how it has affected us. Uh, leading to this event, we felt already that Turkey was extremely polarized uh, between different identities uh, within Turkey. There was a growing, and lifestyle, there was a growing sense of uh, tension. However, after uh, today's announcement uh, of Trump victory, uh, of course, we followed many commentators, and we learned that we are not alone, that the United States has also become very polarized. I guess that's a way of life in, uh, in today's <coughs> larger world. Uh, I'll take a pause, one minute. Sorry, Lina suffered a cough attack. Um, so what happened on July 15? A group of Turkish armed forces officers planned and executed a coup attempt. It was maybe known only hours before, and today we understand that that was only a small part of the Turkish military establishment that had attempted that. As Turks, we have experienced in the last 40 years, uh, maybe 50 years, more than one coup in 1960, in 1971, 1980. And we, for, since 1980, we felt no, no more coups would possibly happen. And this was a great shock to all Turks uh, without exception. But uh, very quickly, within really a space of 12 hours, uh, this event was controlled, primarily because President Erdogan uh, went on uh, FaceTime, actually went on some media channels, and literally urged the public to go on the streets and protest, which they did forcefully face-to-face uh, -face with military <coughs> personnel who were holding arms against its own people, tanks, and even F-16 fighters uh, planting bombs on Turkish parliament. This was incredible, but the reaction, as you would expect from Turks and Turkey, was also incredible, and these protests 
really, literally within 12 hours, turned into a festive celebration of democracy. This was a chance for Turks to unite, after being so polarized, to unite in uh, defense of democracy. This was a tremendous outcry against an ideology which could use weapons against its own public. Now, we don't want to go into too many details, but the Turkish leadership has clearly identified that there is an uh, intrinsic organization uh, who is behind uh, this coup. And uh, today there is a uh, state of emergency which uh, has targeted to clean up uh, certain uh, intrinsic organizations from within the Turkish state. But what happened is, in the current atmosphere in Turkey, uh, we see a big number of challenges, not only economically, but also uh, politically, which we see are, as you know, we have a literally a war going next to our border, uh, with ISIS. We have a 900-kilometer border with Syria. It is affecting Turkey. I mean, there is no doubt that it is affecting Turkey and will continue to affect whatever the outcome is. In addition to that, uh, the southeast of Turkey has always been a difficult area where we've had, uh, for 35 years, terror originating from a Kurdish terrorist, terrorist organization called PKK. Since the last five years, we have a major uh, load on our economy where Turkey actually hosted 2.5 million Syrian refugees. This is by far the largest number uh, of any nation. We have an ongoing uh, chase after uh, the uh, proponents of the coup. In addition, we have uh, some constitutional changes planned to bring about a US-style presidential uh, framework of leadership to Turkey. And all of these are quite uh, challenging to plan ahead. Naturally, our long, very long accession plan with the EU today is taking a short pause. On the economy, uh, since we've been hit by terror and tourism uh, is down, our currency is down, our credit rating is down. So in general, our investment and growth environment is very much unlike what it used to be maybe six, seven, eight years ago. So we try to convey to you some of the challenges uh, that affect us and um, now uh, we would like to turn to how it affects the, the Jewish community as a whole. Lina, can you talk or shall I take it? Oh. I want to pass to Lena. She's just she gotten over the cough attack that she has. <laughs> yeah. You're okay? Yeah, I think I survived. <laughs> anyway, change of season doesn't work sometimes. Uh, well, how was the Turkish Jewish community affected? We have to be we have to be very clear about it. Anti-Semitism hasn't increased. Uh, because of July 15, it is in the similar levels as what it was before. There has always been anti-Semitism, and it uh, originates from part of the local media in uh, different environments. And interestingly, uh, the recent peace deal between Turkey and Israel is possibly going to prove uh, to be positive because we've observed that anti-Semitism 
uh, affects the Turkish Jewish community much more when there are challenging situations or political issues between our country and Israel. And at those points, we tend to, be, uh, to become the center, center of attention. At this moment, we're not center stage, unlike in the past in the Gaza operation or in the Mar uh, Blue Marmara operation. Uh, generally speaking, as a, a tradition, we in the Turkish Jewish community have not been very outspoken. Our role in public space has been limited. Of course, we are represented in different uh, professions. Uh, we are everywhere, but we have not been very prominent, uh, as we cannot be civil servants or be uh, officers in the military or politicians uh, like the other minorities, we have not been very outspoken. Um, and comparing ourselves to the American Jews, the numbers are really what makes a minority uh, politically uh, significant. So with 17,000 Turkish Jews in an 80 million country, it doesn't work that way. Uh, as of today, additional security measures have increased the financial strain of the community, and we hope this is going to be temporary because it started to increase because of the threats coming, initiating from Daesh, specifically to the Turkish Jewish community and generally to the Turkish Republic, to the Turkish people. Like most of societies in today's economy, we have a pay-as-you-go system. We earn, we spend. We get, we spend. And in this way, we unfortunately remain vulnerable to external adverse events. Has the Jewish community been affected? Jewish uh, Sorry, has the Jewish state been affected? Well, the answer is yes. But we had adversity in the past as well. Security levels are kept high at all times. We work 724 to ensure the security of our children. Unfortunately, this academic year, we had uh, lower registration levels than the usual. But mostly it was preschool and the first grade because of the security reasons. Uh, families are a little bit uh, concerned when the students are younger, but we are working to recover in the next year. We also had more than usual number of students who transferred to other schools. It happens every year, but this year we had more than the usual number. That's also due to security reasons. And we had more familiars that made Aliyah this year. Combined, these developments have put more strain on the school finances. Now I'm passing to our academic, um, to our education coordinator, Rene, who will uh, the conference tell us, has been unmuted. Okay, who will tell us about the uh, assets of the school? Okay, shalom everyone. Uh, we believe that Jewish school is and uh, will be our most valuable asset. Uh, despite current challenges, our goal is to sustain our school's competitive age. And uh, uh, we have Hebrew lessons from kindergarten till uh, the end of the high school, and we use many methods to teach this lesson uh, Hebrew. We use Hollywood Wash program and NETA program, and teachers are trained in Israel and United States. And uh, to enhance and upgrade the level of Judaic education, we have a Judaic education coordinator in the school, and that he organizes many Jewish activities in the school. We celebrate festivals uh, with all of the school. We invite community members to our school to celebrate these festivals together. Uh, and uh, in literature lessons, students read novels of Jewish authors, and they read some uh, books about our history. 
And every year we visit uh, camps in Poland, and we attend, we participate March of the Living. And uh, uh, we bring students to Israel, to kibbutz every year, and also we visit Israeli universities. And uh, we, uh, nowadays, we want to implement a new uh, teaching method in our school. This is team model, science, technology, engineering, arts and mathematics method. And students are taking uh, coding lessons and they are participating in makers and uh, robotics uh, activities. And we support uh, our students and young graduates with mentor, uh, mentorship programs. And uh, we are improving our English here, and students are taking English lessons from native teachers. <coughs> Uh, education, uh, the academic curriculum prescribed by the Ministry of Education is quite intensive and normally we have the ability to replace certain electives like the teaching of Islam with our own. To that we have added a significant dimension of Jewish cultural education and incorporated Jewish history and culture to many classes such as music, performance, arts, and the like. The Jewish curriculum is currently being developed in-house with the assistance of our school graduates and youth club Madrihim. Our, uh, we will be starting uh, the curriculum this November, I mean in, in a few weeks, and uh, we will be also be teaching them our Sephardic history, roots, traditions, and uh, our history throughout Europe and Ottoman Empire and Turkey. We have a lot of success stories. We have a large uh, body of graduate students that we are proud of. Uh, they have won uh, international science competitions, worlds that they uh, throughout Europe and. USA. Uh, re recent graduates are now turning back to extend scholarship support, so we have a solidarity among our graduates. We have <coughs> many success stories in the States, in, in Israel. We have um, PhD students in Chicago University, Astrophysics, Michigan University, Neuroscience, UCLA Molecular Biology, and we have a lot of uh, students who are also continuing with our, uh, after the university continuing with their uh, <coughs> graduate programs. And also we have successful synergy attained by cooperating with the ORT and other Jewish organizations. We have uh, collaborations with uh, Jewish European schools across Europe. We have combined programs. Uh, we also have combined programs with Israeli uh, schools. In Haifa, we have uh, in Budapest, in Prague, students are going to those schools. We are also receiving them and also as a result of the above, we have a program that the students are teaching Holocaust in local schools in Istanbul. So, in uh, in the last two frames, uh, I think in the last 30 minutes, we have tried to convey to you that as Turkish Jews, we live in a challenging environment but we have nothing less than very high ambitions for especially our young people. We are dedicated to the development of global citizens who would be equipped to succeed across different cultures and geographies, but keeping their proud heritage, learning about their proud heritage. We do not limit ourselves 
to Turkish culture, although we have been here over 500 years, we really seek to educate global perspective. We do engage with parents, young parents, and their children from a very early age, from ages two and up. But we do feel at the same time that the upcoming generation of Turkish Jews will, great, will face greater challenges than their parents. So we would like to continue to deliver our promise about giving them the best education as long as, of course, we can continue to support our school. So in closing, we wanted to use this opportunity to say we are here in any. We feel that as a Turkish Jewish community, our contribution to U.S.-Israeli-Turkish relations has been important in the past, and we feel it continues to be so today. We feel we've been able to make an impact to fight anti-Semitic rhetoric in the political arena by separating religion from the actions of Israeli states. We feel that is well received by people who create anti-Semitic rhetoric. We also seek to have our voice heard a little bit more within the Jewish world at large. And through this, we seek to create more opportunities for our young people to overcome new challenges in Turkey and beyond. With that, I'd like to close uh, the presentation part and thank you for uh, listening to us. Uh, we'd be happy to take questions from participants and try to address them to the best of our ability. Thank you all so much for this. Um, I know we all learned a lot about what Turkey has been going through and, and the beautiful work that you all are doing at your school. So thank you so much, Metin and Lena, for all of your hard work and putting together this presentation. We're so glad you were able to uh, join us. Um, the folks on the call, you guys are all unmuted. So if you have any questions, we're, you're welcome to ask them. Um, the line is open. If you don't feel comfortable, you can also chat them to me or email them to me. Okay. So um, if there are no any questions, we're just going to close this meeting out today. If you have um, any questions that come up later, feel free to send me an email. I will be circulating Metin no. and Lena's. Uh, Arab, I'd um, like to ask Rufat Hassan uh, to utter maybe some uh, remarks because sure. uh, he has also helped us uh, for this preparation. Uh, so Rufat Bey. Well, I am only invited just as a listener, but let me tell you that I have spent a lifetime for education and the education of the Jewish community in Istanbul. I have started life and succeeded, not because I had anything, but only the education my family could have given me. So I owe to my community and to my people to give them equal opportunities in education. And I have done my best to do it. However, restrained economic atmosphere and the dangers of the daily security life in Turkey is forcing me to address you more openly and come to your arms to see how your community can really extend a heart and a hand to us. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Meryl, um, thank you for giving us this opportunity. <laughs>
Thank of you course. for my pleasure. And um, and like I said, we'll be uh, circulating Metin and Lena's information if you have more questions. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Bye. Bless you.